This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Mencha Magapagal and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. They consider shrimp as their favorite seafood. But not for John Russell, a college student. Nakumain po ako ng seafood, nung shrimp po, uh, namantal yung katawan ko. John Russell was not aware that eating seafood like shrimp could trigger his asthma. Medyo malalaki po talaga yung mga pantal and then sobrang makate siya. And then sumabay pa yung sobrang hirap ng paghinga. Kapag po nagkakaroon ako ng nahirapan akong huminga, Yun po, parang hindi ko po ako makahingagamit yung nose ko, so kailangan bibig. An allergy is a hypersensitivity disorder of the immune system. The immune system produces substances known as antibodies. Not all pantal is allergy and not all allergy is pantal. Being an allergic person means na it's in your genes na mamana. So usually you have a family history of either asthma, or allergic rhinitis, or pagpapantal, or urticaria, and then that gene is passed on to the child, and then the manifestation may be different because when you say allergy, it's not just uh, limited to the skin. The most common allergies include allergic reactions to food and drugs. Among Filipinos, top food allergens are milk, eggs, and seafood. A patient suspected to have an allergy is advised to take a skin test. Skin test um, is one, one way of finding out what exactly you should avoid. Avoidance is uh, very important. So if it is a food allergen, we recommend strict avoidance for maybe a year until your immune system forgets and then you can reintroduce. What causes these types of allergies? How does one develop a certain allergy? Who are more prone to have allergies? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Jovilia Abong, allergologist and the president of the Philippine Society of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology. And also with us is Dr. Linda Varona, allergologist and the immediate past president of the Philippine Society of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Doctors. Good evening. Welcome to MedDoc. Thank you very much for allowing us to uh, have this free consultation, if you will. For tonight, we're talking about allergies, of course. And I think that this is really important because a lot of people are walking around and not even knowing that they're allergic to certain uh, things in the environment, right? So how does one develop an allergy? Okay, how? Uh, when uh, an allergy is usually an inherited disease, and when you meet that allergy, allergen around mm -hmm. or in the environment, that's when you have the manifestation or the signs and symptoms of allergy. Okay, so um, what exactly happens to uh, the immune system, the body, when we encounter allergens or when we have an allergy? Uh, at first, the body recognizes it as mm -hmm. foreign and then the body reacts, as she has said, producing antibodies. Mm -hmm. So the next time that person gets exposed to that allergen, let's say how's this mite or the shrimp or chicken or egg, that thing causes a very uh, fulminant reaction or the body releases histamine and other chemical mediators that causes the manifestations. So basically the body kind of overreacts yes, that's to right. normal to what other people would consider normal things. Yes, wow, true. very interesting. So in your, in your uh, years of practice, what are some of the um, um, types of allergies that you've encountered? So, well, um, food, uh, this is type one. There are different types of allergy, mm -hmm. but the allergy we're talking about tonight is the instant reaction. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's food, then allergic rhinitis, asthma, or skin asthma or atopic dermatitis. Okay, so uh, when we say there, 
I know that there are three different, um, let's say, if you can categorize it. You have the allergy to food, maybe, and then you have the drugs, and also uh, respiratory. Yes, respiratory allergies. allergies yes. So can you, different, can you just give us like a, a quick differentiation of the three? Okay, respiratory allergies would consist of allergies in the nose. Mm -hmm. That's what we call allergic rhinitis. Okay. We have uh, allergy in the bronchioles mm -hmm. or the airways. That would be the allergic bronchial asthma. And sometimes also you may have allergy in the mucosa of your eyes. We okay. call that allergic conjunctivitis. So that's what consists your respiratory mm -hmm. allergies. Now we also have food allergy that may usually manifest in the skin but it can also manifest as uh, in the respiratory um, system. And in worst cases, you may have a systemic reaction with that, w that we call anaphylaxis. And also we have drug allergies that may also manifest the same as food allergy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a quick look at the food allergies because that was what we saw in the video earlier that we played um, before uh, we came on. Why do you think that it's important for people uh, to know what they're allergic to when it comes to food? Well, it's important because uh, the best treatment for allergy is avoidance. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to identify the food that causes the reaction, then uh, you can prevent a potential severe allergic reaction. Um, and is it possible to find out if you're allergic to a certain type of food if you haven't been exposed to it yet? Like maybe a test or something? Or is it you have to be exposed to it? Talaga? You Usually patients come to us when they already have a suspicion or a manifestation mm -hmm. of an allergic disease. Uh, we don't usually do routine diagnostic tests unless of course we suspect that that patient has an allergic reaction and we want to confirm that his suspicion is correct or not. Now you mentioned um, something called anaphylaxis. It sounds like such a scary word. Yes. So what exactly does it mean? Yes, anaphylaxis is actually a systemic reaction, meaning we have a lot of allergic um, cells in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, allergic cells in the nose, in the, and then if they're triggered, then you have the local manifestation in the nose, what we call rhinitis. But if they all react at the same time, then that is a life-threatening, a potentially life-threatening reaction because, you know, all the mast cells in the body will react. Oh wow, is this what they, what they show like in the movies, yung anaphylactic shock? Yes, yes, let's see. But you, normally you have only a few seconds or a few minutes before um, the, yeah, the onset. The onset, right? So if, for example, you're witnessing this as it happens, um, what are some first aid uh, steps that you can take? The, f the, the best antidote, of course, would be epinephrine. Okay. That's really the antidote for anaphylaxis because it is a very rapid reaction and potentially fatal. But if you encounter one without any medications at hand, then you have to secure the airways of mm -hmm. the um, patient because if you have anaphylaxis, there is a potentially um, there's, there's a potential obstruction of your airways. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure may drop, so you have to ask the patient to lie down and raise his leg so that the return of the blood to the brain will be um, um, increased. Does it have to be on a flat surface that's yes. hard? A flat surface like the sofa okay. would do, but you have to elevate the, um, uh, the legs. Okay. And then if there is already a circulatory um, collapse, then mm -hmm. you have to do your resuscit resuscitation. And call a doctor. Yes. yes. For sure. Call yes. a doctor for yes. sure. For so sure. what about, um, you mentioned something about allergic rhinitis being one of uh, the respiratory allergies that you were talking about yes. earlier. Um, how do you know that that is allergic rhinitis? What is it exactly? Well, allergic rhinitis is the, actually the most common allergic manifestation. Mm -hmm. So it's the most common. And then uh, you can tell it by recurrent, like on and off symptoms of sneezing, mm -hmm. then runny nose, and 
if it's severe, you can have congestion, nasal stuffiness, then also uh, nasal itch. So if these are the symptoms and it's always there, then most likely you will suspect an allergic rhinitis. So this is something that goes on for a long period yes. of time. This isn't something that go, maybe you experience for a week and then it goes away? Yes. Yeah. And um, of course, um, aside from its recurrent and chronic nature, um, usually there is a family history of allergy, any type of allergy in the family. Okay, so you've been mentioning a lot about um, a family history. Um, so does that mean really it's allergies are a parang genetic and it's handed down from parents talaga to their kids? Around 85% of uh, oh. the time it's um, an inherited disease. So if both parents have uh, the same type of allergy, for example, if they both have allergic rhinitis, then the chances of their child having rhinitis also would be around uh, 70 70 so percent. 70 that's a, percent. Yes. That's a pretty big number. Yes. Yes. Actually, so um, is there a way that you know parents can actually minimize the risk of passing it on to their kids? Well, allergy is actually um, interaction between the environment and the genes. So if the, fam the parents are aware that they have a strong allergic history, then they should already minimize uh, too much exposure to the potential allergens, like maybe keeping pets mm -hmm. or like uh, carpets in the house or like feeding the child with too much. You know, little exposure is at birth or at young age is now acceptable like to, to make the immune system of the child recognize those things as normal and they will not treat it as foreign. But uh, giving it too much might overwhelm the immune system and might have a reaction, develop a reaction. Okay, so everything in moderation, I guess, yeah. would, be, would be the key to that. So I think that we have a question via Twitter, Doc. So is it or is it not advisable to take medicines when having allergic rhinitis attacks? Stop. The, yes, actually, when you have an acute attack of allergic rhinitis, then you can take your medication. Okay. That's, when, that's the, an indication for you to uh, take your medication. And uh, one of the first line medication for allergic rhinitis would be your antihistamines. Mm -hmm. But when do you know that it, this is an acute attack? Okay, for example, if you're allergic to house dust mite, mm -hmm. um, yun yung sinasabi nilang allergic sila sa alikabok. When they come to a room or somebody is cleaning the house and then they suddenly have this sneezing and you know rhino, runny nose, mm -hmm. itching in the nose, that's that's a sign yes that's already an allergic attack. okay yes. so we're going to talk more about uh, the signs and symptoms a little bit later on and of course answer more questions med talk will be right back did you know that there is a cell phone allergy often referred to as cell phone allergy this kind of allergy is actually called as nickel allergy. Prolonged exposure to a cell phone exposes a person to nickel, a metal that is often used in phone buttons, LCD screen frames, and headsets. Symptoms of this kind of allergy include presence of what allergologists call cell phone rashes, itchy red bumps, or painful blisters on the patient's jaw, cheek and ears. We are back on Med Talk, and we are still discussing allergies. Now, we're, when we left off earlier, we were talking about some of the symptoms when it came to uh, allergic, allergic rhinitis. rhinitis. So let's talk on more broader terms this time around. Now, one of the more effective ways of uh, figuring out if you have allergies to specific things is by um, getting a skin test. So can you walk us through that process? What is that process like, and why is it important? Okay. Um the type of allergy that we are talking about right now would be the inherited one and one of the 
important antibodies would be what we call an allergic antibody, the IgE. IgE. And um, it, re it, it is specific for a certain allergen. So when you are exposed to that allergen, then those specific IgEs are the ones that, are, um, that bind to it. Okay. So um, skin testing, um, in the skin we place the Drops. Uh, extracts the extracts, drops of extracts mm -hmm. on the skin, we prick it, and then um, the IgE, if you have the I specific IgE there, it will bind to that allergen, and then um, it will now um, degranulate or activate the mast cell to, pr to produce all those allergic substances, and then it will create a wheel, a, s a small wheel and a small redness on that mm -hmm. area, uh, that will be very itchy and we measure that to see whether you, you're positive or not. So how long does the entire procedure take? Uh, usually the procedure is, lasts like less than an hour mm -hmm. but, you, but the waiting time is around 20 minutes. So you put little drops of the allergens and then you scratch it then you wait for 15 to 20 minutes. If you develop a rash or uh, like my pantal siya, then that could be a sign that that patient has antibodies against that allergen. Okay, so you were talking about pantal or rash and a lot of people, you know, when you see pantal on your skin, you immediately think, I must have come into contact with something, I'm allergic to something. So when, when can you say that you're allergic to something or it's just an irritation on your skin? Is there a difference between the two? Now, um, oftentimes, if it's just an acute um, outbreak of rashes, and then you have to review the history mm -hmm. and correlate if there is something that triggered it. Because when you have uh, rashes, it means, or yung pantal nga, no, or tagulabay, that means there is a release of histamine. So usually, it can be an allergic reaction, but it's not all the time because there are other things like physical factors, like too much heat or uh, certain medicines or things that uh, can trigger it right away, but it's not an allergic reaction that it goes through. Okay, so uh, what are some of the complications? Earlier we were talking about anaphylaxis, but there has to be some other things that aren't quite as drastic if you will, and final. So what are some of the complications that can happen? Okay. For allergic rhinitis, um, the long-term, cl the complications would be asthma, mm -hmm. um, sinusitis, or otitis media. You know, you, you're, you have infections in the middle ear. Is that the one where you feel like you're, you lose your balance and there's like water inside? Yes, okay. or there may be pus coming out. Uh -huh. If it's um, infected, mm -hmm. you may have recurrent. Um, you may have recurrent tonsillitis, or you may snore mm -hmm. at night, and mm -hmm. uh, what we call uh, obstructive apnea. Um, you have prolonged uh, periods of not breathing at all when you are sleeping. That's your apnea, and of course, your quality of life will be very affected by. But allergic what, rhinitis. What exactly are the causes? Because we know with food, it's a specific food. But with allergic rhinitis, if, uh, what are some of the triggers, if you will, or causes for uh, it? Well, when you do the skin test testing, that's where you find out what also. are the causes. I think that's very important to find it out because sometimes people just uh, are in a denial stage. Mm -hmm. They don't want to implicate their cat or their dog or their carpet or the whatever is in the house. So they don't believe it, but if you do the skin test, you're able to identify it, or if you really do not know, then how can you avoid what you do not know? So I, it's very important to do the skin test. Very Doc, there are a lot of people also who say that, you know, I'm allergic to a certain substance, so if I just continue to maybe eat a little bit of it or after, after a period of time, I'm sure Moa, my allergy is going to disappear. Is that a fact or... If is that dangerous? If you are referring to food allergy, then that is dangerous because um, it may lead to anaphylaxis. So okay. even if the uh, anaphylaxis is not um, a sure thing when you have food allergy, uh, it is a life-threatening uh, condition. So we try to avoid as much as possible. So if you identify your allergen, especially food allergen, then you have to strictly avoid 
the okay. Kind of now, with with regards to um, the uh, allergic rhinitis, so when you're exposed to these factors, it's okay if you still have your pet at home, or are you supposed to give well. your pet a new home with someone else that you love? I have patients who transfer their children rather than transferring the dogs <laughs> or they're removing their carcass. No, but uh, kidding aside, actually, that's really the best treatment for allergy and it's avoidance. So yes. uh, you really have to remove all those things or you have to suffer the consequence but there's also the other treatment like it's called immunotherapy mm -hmm. wherein if you really cannot avoid the allergens or you have severe symptoms or you cannot tolerate the medicine or cannot remove the medicine then you can subject these patients to immunotherapy or allergy shots oh there are allergy shots yes. that you can take para to immunize yeah that's a injection okay uh, Okay, let's talk a little bit about, because we love to self-medicate. Yes. Let's, let's face it, we really do love to self-medicate. And I've heard quite a few that if you have an allergic reaction and you don't have access to antihistamine or any medication, then just eat two spoonfuls of sugar or um, drink a can of soda. Is, is that That's a, a fact or is that fiction? Myth. That's a myth. Really? Yes, it is a myth. Man, and I've been... <laughs> <laughs> so what are what are some of the home remedies that actually do work home remedy i don't know of one but the surest thing would be avoidance avoidance yes allergen avoidance is always um, what we teach to our patients and also in combination with medications and education medications and education yeah. and so it, yes uh, and if a person has a known allergy, then it's best that he always carries with him or her the appropriate medicine because you do not know when you will have the reaction or not. Thank or you if very there's much. an anaphylaxis, you need to have an injection with you. At all times. Yes. At, all, At times. all times. Well, speaking of education, uh, somebody on Twitter would like an education and is asking, my three-year-old daughter has allergies. Will she outgrow it? Is there a chance? Yes, there is, especially for respiratory allergies or milk allergies. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, in 70% of the time, milk allergies can be uh, outgrown, especially from around four years old to around 16 or 17 years old, you can outgrow mm -hmm. it at that time. Now, for respiratory allergies, there's a 30% chance that you will outgrow it when you reach your adolescence or your pubertal stage. Mm -hmm when you have um, in females when you already have your uh, you know when you are when you're growing menstruation okay. and then um, for males would be when they're already starting to have low voice mm. when you know when they're starting to have the growth bursts and is is it also if they have a chance about growing it as you grow older is there also a chance of you developing yes. new allergies yes Wow. Yeah, there's there's this thing called allergic march, mm -hmm. and it's a phenomenon wherein uh, the allergy target organ changes. Like it can start with the uh, gastrointestinal tract, and then the skin, and then later on it it uh, fades out, and then you get the respiratory allergies. So it kind of transfers from one place to it, the other. It marches from marches. one allergy to another. And, and what do you do to treat that? Uh, okay, we we don't re we cannot really treat it, meaning we cannot um, eliminate it, but we can delay. Delay. We can delay because one of the first allergens that we that the infants are introduced would be food, especially milk. So um, that's what we call primary prevention. So if the family is uh, ha has a history of allergies, then you can probably do primary prevention mm -hmm. by giving them, of course, advocating breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. That would be best, and while the mother is breastfeeding, she should avoid the very allergenic food, like, of course, milk and uh, milk eggs. products. So eggs exposure and to exposure, uh, the high-risk yes. yes. high foods. We have another question on Facebook this time. I get rashes whenever I eat mangoes, but it's something that I can tolerate. I was told that I'll get immune to my allergy if I continue eating mangoes. Is this true? So she can tolerate uh, the reaction. Oh, actually, there's something in the mango. Maybe it's the yung dakta or lectite mm -hmm. that causes the itchiness. So it might not be allergy at all. So that's a possibility. 
Number two would be um, if you have allergic rhinitis and you are allergic to the pollens mm -hmm. around, then you can cr it can cross react with the uh, fruits. And so you will have uh, also aller when you eat fruits, fresh fruits and mm -hmm. vegetables, you may get what we call oral, oral allergy syndrome where you have uh, manifestations of itching and uh, rashes around the mouth. Okay, so those are definitely signs and symptoms that we need to be watching out for. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc, for uh, sharing your time and your expertise with us tonight. Thank you for inviting yes. us. Definitely eye-opening. And of course, I'd like to thank Dr. Abong and Dr. Varona for joining us in our discussion tonight. We'll see you again next Tuesday on MedTalk, 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation on Solar News Channel. This is Medjo Mokapagal. Good night. They consider shrimp as their favorite seafood. But not for John Russell, a college student. Nung kumain po ako ng seafood, nung shrimp po, uh, namantal yung katawan ko. John Russell was not aware that... This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Menchu Makapagal and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Eating seafood like shrimp could trigger his asthma. Medyo malalaki po talaga yung mga pantal and then sobrang makate siya and then sumabay pa yung sobrang hirap ng paghinga. Kapag po nagkakaroon ako ng nahihirapan akong huminga, yun po parang hindi ko po ako makahinga gamit yung nose ko so kailangan bibig. An allergy is a hypersensitivity disorder of the immune system. The immune system produces substances known as antibodies. Not all pantal is allergy and not all allergy is pantal. Being an allergic person means na it's in your genes, na mamana. So usually you have a family history of either asthma or allergic rhinitis or pagpapantal or urticaria. And then that gene is passed on to the child. And then the manifestation may be different because when you say allergy, it's not just uh, limited to the skin. The most common allergies include allergic reactions to food and drugs. Among Filipinos, top food allergens are milk, eggs, and seafood. A patient suspected to have an allergy is advised to take a skin test. Skin test um, is one, one way of finding out what exactly you should avoid. Avoidance is uh, very important. So if it is a food allergen, we recommend strict avoidance for maybe a year until your immune system forgets and then you can reintroduce. What causes these types of allergies? How does one develop a certain allergy? Who are more prone to have allergies? 